hidden in the peaceful northwest corner of Yosemite National Park, once lay the Hetch Hetchy Valley. John Muir, often referred to as the father of our national parks, was one of the first to take in the scenic beauty of the valley in 1870. Muir spoke of Hetch Hetchy Valley as a wonderfully exact counterpart of the Yosemite Valley, making it one of nature's rarest and most precious mountain temples. The iconic damming of the Hetch Hetchy Valley, which led to the loss of a beautiful piece of Yosemite National Park, stands as a major turning point in the environmental movement. The Raker Act of 1913, which allowed for the building of a dam in Yosemite, was a crucible for the conservation and preservation movements, and therefore led to nature and preservation awareness. Although nature preservation has failed to keep the Hetch Hetchy Valley untouched, it led to the legacy of greater protection in national parks. Established in 1890, the Yosemite Valley became the second national park, featuring the Hetch Hetchy Valley as one of the Yosemite's lesser known sisters. In the same year, the mayor of San Francisco, James Phelan, first proposed damming Hetch Hetchy as a reservoir to help the city become self-sufficient. Two years later, in 1892, John Muir and a number of his supporters founded the Sierra Club. The members formed the club to, in Muir's words, do something for wilderness and make the mountains glad. With their new organization, they plan to prevent the city of San Francisco from stripping the valley of its natural beauty and annihilating the hundreds of plants and animal species within the valley. Mayor Phelan, in 1903, applied to the United States Department of Interior to store water in the Hitchhiki Valley. The Secretary of the Interior, Ethan Allen Hitchcock, immediately denied the request, due to the fact that Hitchhiki is within a national park. The city of San Francisco appealed making the claim that the reservoir would only enhance the beauty of the valley. The Great San Francisco Earthquake and Fire of 1906 left San Francisco desperate for a new water source and became a turning point in the Battle of Hetchy. The city then applied to the United States Department of Interior to gain water rights to Hetchy. San Francisco city officials met with the Secretary of Interior, James Garfield, on July 24, 1907 to lobby the damming of Hetchy. On August 30th, the Sierra Club Board of Directors adopted a resolution that strongly opposed the damning of Hetch Hetchy to the Secretary of Interior. That fall, John Muir, at age 69, after a 12-year absence, visited the Hetch Hetchy Valley. In May of 1908, San Francisco filed a petition asking the Secretary of Interior to reopen the city's application for water rights. It requested rights to both Hetch Hetchy and nearby Lake Eleanor. Their application promised to develop Lake Eleanor to full capacity before the development of the Hetchy site. That promise was never fulfilled. To dam the Hetchy Valley, they may as well dam for water tanks, the people's cathedrals and churches, for no holy or temple has ever been consecrated by the heart of man. Willing to compromise, Muir proposed that President Roosevelt give the city only Lake Eleanor. He sent the message to the 1908 Governor's Conference on Conservation. Nothing dollar boy is safe, however guarded. Thus, the Yosemite Park, the beauty glory of California and the nation, nature's own mountain wonderland, has been attacked by spoilers ever since it was established. And this strife, I suppose, must go on as part of the eternal battle between right and wrong. But the city's application was approved by Secretary Garfield, who had never visited Hachachi, only four days after he received it. In 1909, the city insisted that it must have control over Ripley like Eleanor and Hachachi as reservoirs. Meanwhile, the Spring Valley Water Company again offered a buyout to San Francisco, a far less costly system than damming Hetch Hetchy. Sierra Club representatives testified at Senate hearings on the issue, opposing the destruction of the Hetch Hetchy Valley. The leaders of the Sierra Club formed a new organization, the Society of Preservation of National Parks, also known today as the National Parks Conservation Association. Notable figures from all over the country became leaders and further publicized the campaign against the dam. In February of 1910, Taft's Secretary of Interior, Richard Ballinger, vetoed the Interior Department's approval for Hachachi to be used by San Francisco. The city was asked to show cause on why Hachachi should not be withdrawn from the Garfield's grant. In February of 1913, the Secretary of Interior's engineer's report recommended the damming of Hachachi. Three days before leaving office, Secretary Fisher decided that he lacked the statutory authority to grant a permit to San Francisco, giving the decision to Congress. Throughout the rest of the year, Congress continues to hold hearings, and the city lobbied hard. The New York Times, as well as most other newspapers in the country, repeatedly opposed the damming of Hachachi. Senators received thousands of letters disapproving the destruction of the valley. Despite all of this, 
President Woodrow Wilson signed the Raker Act of 1913, permitting San Francisco to build the dam and reservoir on the Tuolumne River in Hetch Hetchy Valley, after many years of nationwide debate. John Muir and the Sierra Club became discouraged after the loss of the two-decade-long fight, but a glimpse of hope still remained. Although San Francisco had won the battle and gained a new water source, Americans became aware to the threats that were posed to national parks. John Muir died on Christmas Eve of 1914, shortly after the city commenced construction of the O'Shaughnessy Dam. The Sierra Club and John Muir lost that campaign, but during that time they raised a lot of awareness throughout the world and throughout the United States in particular about threats to our national parks. So that was a major turning point, I think, for environmental movement, for national parks, and kind of made Hetch Hetchy uh, something to be remembered for our history. Environmentalists fought saying, No violation of a park on such a scale as the damming of Hetch Hetchy would ever occur again. At the same time, the popular enthusiasm for the wilderness preservation has long since grown to the proportions of a national cult with mere enshrined at a time. Despite the major losses that came with the damming of Hetchetchi, much was gained from the National Awakening. The dam assisted the preservation movement in providing a new push in the fight to protect our national treasures. The people who opposed the damming of Hetchetchi also fought with the creation of the National Parks Act of 1916, which was also known as the Organic Act. Well, I think the big turning point of Hetchy is twofold. It convinces environmentalists that they need to be stronger, the preservation movement, that it needs to be stronger, better organized, and, and two, it convinces them that they need their own agency in the federal government to demand better protection for the parks. The creation of the National Parks Association in 1917 must also be credited to those who fought for Chechi. San Francisco, after many difficulties, completed the O'Shaughnessy Dam in May 1923. In 1928, the city of San Francisco was indirectly forced to buy the Spring Valley Water Company due to the fact that the city had to put the waters of the company to full use before using the Hetchetchi water. Stephen Mather, the first director of the National Park Service, became bothered by San Francisco being ignorant of the Raker Act. It seemed rather difficult to make them understand that there was such an act and that it imposed upon San Francisco certain obligations. Horace Albright, assistant director, was shocked when he heard that supervisors and guests were using the park as a private retreat. By 1929, city engineer Michael O'Shaughnessy placed all his efforts to complete the Hetchetchi system. David Brower, among other wilderness fanatics, was inspired by John Muir's exquisite words. Brower used the lament of Hetchetchi to prevent the buildings of dams in parks, including Echo Park. In 1950, the Colorado River Storage Project was first proposed, suggesting the construction of a dam in Echo Park. By 1956, the public opinion forced the Bureau of Reclamation to desert their plans of damming Echo Park. The legacy of Hetchetchi prevented the buildings of dams in Yellowstone National Park, Glacier National Park, Dinosaur National Monument, and Grand Canyon National Park by promoting new organizations to form along with the Sierra Club. In August of 1987, Secretary Donald Zodell suggested developing a second Yosemite by removing the O'Shaughnessy Dam and destroying the Hetchetchi Valley. The plan was to drain the reservoir in order to restore the valley while taking the water source away from San Francisco. The high price that the plan required was the main reason why the plan was not followed through. The state of California reported an estimate cost of $13 billion to fully restore the valley and replace the water supply. The controversy over the construction of the O'Shaughnessy Dam and Reservoir in the Hetchetchi Valley within Yosemite National Park in order to supply water to San Francisco strengthened and resolved the early environmental movements in the United States and contributed to the establishment of the National Park Service as a federal conservation agency in 1916. The recognition that natural resources must be conserved was a turning point not only in the environmental movements, but also in cultural history. Although the O'Shaughnessy Dam has not yet been removed, the legacy of Hetchetchi is an inspiration to wilderness activists everywhere. Harriet Monroe, a poet, once said when addressing Hetchetchi, I cannot think of the lake that today covers the flowery vale without a pain for the nation's loss of something too beautiful to perish. One of those miracles which nature flings out for perpetual delight and which man too often destroys.